Hi everyone. As I've said before, I will never ask for any financial assistance on this channel, but I will ask that you take a moment after the video to witness these two wonderful acts of God I am about to share. I'm reaching out for some support and assistance for our brother in Christ, Johnny Newkirk. Johnny has an incredible testimony, a true life of overcoming trial and adversity through drugs and addictions to losing literally everything, including his family and his possessions. Yet throughout it all, he found God, picked up his Bible, and has since been doing missionary work in Uganda and helping to do the Lord's work in spite of all he has been faced with. Johnny is just starting to raise money to be full-time in Uganda and to continue his work. So I ask, if inclined, can you please help support a true spirit-filled brother in Christ? Any amount, no matter how small, will greatly help to see this wonderful act of God fulfilled. Let's help Johnny reach his goal, for it is clearly God's will for his life. Another group that is close to my heart is Light of God in Darkness. They're doing some amazing work in Kenya and across the world. True soldiers for Christ at the grassroots level, working in the communities to strengthen their resolve and helping the needy in any way that they can. Please support these wonderful sisters in Christ. And once again, no matter, no amount is too small. For those of us that live in abundance, let us help another. Praise God for his workers. Glory to God and Maranatha. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, just doing a, a really quick um, recap. So the point and purpose of this study, okay, is to, to demonstrate and to confirm um, if the three books of Mark, Luke and Matthew are speaking to different people, uh, which I'm getting awfully convinced. And um, I'd say I'm beyond convinced now, but I still want to prove it through scripture. Um, so just to recap, uh, there's a group called Ministry Revealed, and they revealed initially um, this quite some time ago. They've been looking at this for, for several years now, and they uncovered that in Luke, it says, And Herod with his man of war set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and set him to Pilate. In Mark, and they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head. Okay, purple, gorgeous. Matthew, and they stripped him and put on a scarlet robe, red. So, were they colorblind? Why did they all see different colors? And then we see here in Revelation, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a cup, golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of a fornication. They're tribulation colors. Because it talks about Mystery Babylon and Babylon. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay. Gorgeous is more indicative of a bride of a white color. All right. So since I started working on this, um, I've found some interesting things. I won't go too much into some of them because I'm still working on them. Um, but in the Last Supper... Um, I've found this continual reference to, um, through the Bible, of a large upper room, a large place, large chambers, or upper chamber. Okay, and they could reference the same thing or different things. Um, it's known as a cenacle, so it's an extra story in the house um, that they used to used to use. And we see in Acts a story of um, a woman who basically was sick and died and they washed her and laid her in the upper chamber and then everybody came to mourn over her. Okay, so that's one thing I'm working on. Um, the mo thing of interest is when we get to Luke chapter 3, we start getting into, when we talk about John the Baptist, we start getting into when he says the generation of vipers. Okay, this is a really, everybody should know this this moment. Okay, if not, just look it up. Okay, so what we see here, I'm just going to get into this part where he says, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Okay, in Luke, then he said to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. So why we think that he's saying this generation of vipers to the Pharisees, but then he's saying it to the multitude. Why is he saying it to the multitude? 
for Luke, okay? So Luke, okay, let's let's look at this. So there's no also no typology for Mark. The multitude came coming to get baptized, okay? And and we'll see this in some other things that I show in other videos, but the multitude is Mark. It's always referred to as the multitude. Okay? And he said to the multitude to come forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. He refers to the multitude. He's speaking to Mark, the Mark group. He said this to the multitude who came forth to be baptized. So do you think the Pharisees and Sadducees are going to want to be baptized? No, not at all. Um, he's talking to the multitude of people. Okay, But yet in Matthew, it explicitly says, when he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism that he was doing for the multitude, he said to them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He specifically calls out the Pharisees and Sadducees because the, he's speaking to the Matthew group. Who were the Pharisees and Sadducees? Okay, They were the, they were the Jews. They were the, the, those that denied him, that didn't believe him, that didn't follow truth. Okay, they were the ones that persecuted him, that killed him. All right, so ye serpent, and then we see these other references in Matthew that's not anywhere else in Luke or Mark. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? O generation of vipers, how can you be ev being evil? Speak good things, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Okay, so I'm going to present the argument that there are. Okay, three groups. Okay, there's a remnant bride, which is in Luke. There's a great multitude in Mark. And in Matthew, there's also a remnant who remain at the end. Okay, those who endure to the end. Okay, we see it in the baptism with water. Okay, so we see in Luke... When he, John answers, saying unto them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He uses the word unloose. He says it's mightier than I. So he's actually saying or he's acknowledging that he's mighty in some way or that he has some sort of context for being um, you know, he, he has some context for being with the Lord, okay? So his might comes from God. He's a godly man. He's a righteous man. We know that about John anyway, okay? But he proclaims it here. Shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, okay? And fire. In Mark, what does he say? I baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So, baptize you with the Holy Ghost, but there's no mention of fire. Okay, why are these distinctly mentioned separately? It's not just the Holy Spirit, it's, it's and fire as well. Okay, what are you going to need that fire for? You're going to need that fire as a worker, okay, to go out and preach the gospel. That's what you're going to need it for. These people aren't going to be doing that. They're lukewarm. They don't even know the gospel or don't understand it. They're not reading sound doctrine, okay? They're lukewarm. Half into the world, half out of the world. But in Matthew, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. You need to repent, okay? I'm explicitly saying this group needs to repent. He that cometh after me is mightier than me, okay? He that come after me, he comes after me, okay? We'll get into that later, okay? When the Lord comes, you know, feet down on the Mount of uh, Mount of Olives, okay? We'll get into that. He comes after I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, to bear. Not untie, not unloose, but to bear, okay? It's a different meaning there. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more. I bet this group, I shall ba baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Okay. This group, because they're at the end. They're right at the end. This, These are the tribulation saints. Okay. These are the ones that are at the end. The last remaining that pick up their cross. Okay. Because of everything going on. Of course, there's going to be a group that didn't believe. But they're, they're going to wake up then. Okay. This group will need to be woken up. Because they're lukewarm. They need this group to wake them up. 
We see this in John as well. Um, and we see a reference here. I baptize you with water. Um, but there stand ones among you that you know not. Okay. And John's just filling in the gap here. John's just basically, you know, confirming the story that there's there's one at this time who's going to come among you that you don't know. Okay. So when Jesus comes, the dove descends on him. Okay. When he's baptized. So it's really powerful, guys. It's really powerful. We see that there's multiple groups. Okay. Um, let me just see whether I have... Probably, I don't know if I actually have it handy. If not, it's okay. I'll put it together if not. I don't think I do. Okay. Let me just go to KJV. I want you guys to start thinking about this this tribulation period and looking at references to 14 years, okay? Here's it. I love this. Like, this is just so telling. 2 Corinthians 12. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such as one caught up to the third heaven. Okay? He's talking back. And he's talking backwards. He's talking, hey, 14 years ago, I knew a man. He went to the third heaven. Um, I cannot tell out of the body, okay? And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth, how he was caught up in paradise, the second heaven, okay? That's where the, um, that's where the, church, the lukewarm church goes. And heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for man to other. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Okay, I want you to stew on that. I want you to start thinking about this 14 year period of time and thinking about what the prophets are saying. Okay, have a look at, um, you know, go, go to like, for example, the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Okay, if anyone can debate to me that she's not a prophet of God, you know, Good luck to you because all my discernment tells me she is. And have a look at all the things she's prophesying, okay? That she's prophesying about the future and about this time. And everybody's saying, oh, we've only got seven years left, okay? We've only got seven years. All those technological advancements, all those things that have to happen in seven years, okay? I've worked in some of these technologies that are coming, all right, I've, I've had first-hand knowledge of those things and I know where they are and their readiness and I'm telling you, it's more like 10 years away, okay, for many of these things. Um, but don't take it from me. Have a look at all the things to come. A lot has to happen yet. There's, there's a whole bunch of seals to happen. There's a whole bunch of, you know, bowls of wrath. There's all these things that have to happen, okay? And then when you start digging into this for, into the 14 years, there's more reference of the generational changes over 14 years and 7 years. So another thing I'm going to aim in this is trying to prove that there is a 14-year period of time and not a 7-year period of time. It's actually a 21-year period of time if you look at it, okay? Because much has happened already. Um, but yeah, it's it, there's a lot in this, guys, and I, I really... I can't, I keep finding more and more and more in Luke, Mark, and Matthew that just demonstrates the three individual groups. And these typologies, guys, don't think that these are accidents, you know, and, and just subject to poor mistranslation. Many of the words, if you look them up in the Greek, they mean the same thing, okay? The argument holds very little weight. So, yes, that there are translation differences that I mentioned before. Um, but these typologies are intentional. The Bible has hidden meaning in it. It is a code book as well. It is past events, present events, future events. It's prophecy. Okay, start opening your mind up to these different things. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm trying to allow scripture to do its work here. But I just keep seeing that 
you know, the reference to the seven years is, is the only way. And I don't, I'm starting to believe it's not the only way. All right. So that's all I want to say on that. I'll be doing some more videos on it. Um, and yeah, I'm just enjoying um, digging in slowly and taking my time to try and unravel some of these things. But I'm also learning. It's helping to reinforce the word. It really is. I'm starting to learn the word so much better through this process because I have to dart around the Bible. I don't just stay in Luke, Mark and Matthew. I have to start looking around everywhere. And so, yeah, if anyone wants to join in and, and help and throw bits and pieces, just chuck them in the comments or get in touch with me. Um, and um, if, if you don't have my email, just ask for my email and then, you know, send me some stuff. That's fine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really beneficial to study and to, um, and to try and understand. All right. Love you guys. God bless. Maranatha.